got to be honest, and maybe this is just recency bias uh, getting in the way here, but I actually thought NXT was the better show last night. I really did. And not to say that AEW uh, was a bad show at all. It wasn't. I just think NXT actually last night flowed really well. There there weren't a whole lot of down moments. Uh, there were moments that I didn't necessarily care about too much, uh, like Robert Stone and how he uh, was, was involved in putting together this Killian Dane dexter Loomis match for next week. And uh, other than that, though, I mean... EO and Tegan Knox was a really good main event. Uh, EO is just fantastic. EO Shirai is just one of the best wrestlers in the world. Uh, no matter where she is or what she's doing, she's just absolutely fantastic. Timothy Thatcher is awesome. And I look, if you can't figure out what to do with Shayna Baszler, Vince, fine. Give her back to Triple H put her back down in, in NXT. I brought it up last week. I kind of joked about the the bad B division, you know, the, the the bad bit. Just send them out there and just pounding on each other. And the same thing goes with Timothy Thatcher. Um, the Denzel DeJournette match, I think, went two, three minutes, whatever it was. It didn't matter. He, he just, Thatcher is so good. And the persona, how they're doing those vignettes, with him tapping guys out, I think is, I just thought was, was awesome. And, you know, I think you have, maybe they do. I don't pay attention to the shop zone or whatever it's called all that much, but I can see a Timothy Thatcher t-shirt with, you better get some ice on that. You know, get some ice on that, I think is on a t-shirt, you know, and God knows because it's pro wrestling and it's WWE, it will be the ugliest black shirt possible that they'll come up with an awful design on it. But, you know, as a catchphrase to be on a shirt, I think it's awesome. Damian Priest and Cameron Grimes, you know, was not anything epic or anything like that. And, and neither was Donovan Dijak or uh, Dijakovic or whatever the hell his name is. It's still Dijak to me, damn it. And Keith Lee, who, you know, it still may be Dijak and Lee, but they had a WWE-style match last night that didn't give away the farm or anything. It was made to be in the middle of the card. It was made to be put on with no build. Um, I don't know if it was made to be that way, but it, it happened to be that way because uh, they, they announced everything late with Keith Lee, but... I thought it was a good idea, and I thought it was a good... This is a TV show. Every match that's on this TV show does not have to be main event material. Uh, does not have to be PWG spectacular material, or even what Lee and Dijak have done on NXT before, TakeOver level. Now, they had to have a match that basically set up a match for next week with Dijak and with Karrion Cross, which ultimately will set up a match with Karrion Cross and Keith Lee, and... You know, that sort of stuff, even more than any sort of dramatics that you can use with Scarlet Bordeaux and, you know, all that stuff, you know, aesthetically, it looks great when it happens, but you know, I don't even need any of that. I thought they built up the match, you know, with the backstage deal with those two and throughout the night, I thought they did a solid job with that. So I thought it was a, a really good night for NXT. And of course, there was uh, the Indy Hartwell, Shotzi Blackheart thing, which... Again, I'm not in love with that because I'm not in love with the whole Robert Stone thing and the whole Aaliyah deal uh, and the feud with Shotzi. But, hey, you know, if that's the worst thing that happened on his show, you know, your night was pretty good. So I thought everything flowed really well, too. And, you know, also as well, too, the Phantasma team, I thought that vignette was awesome as well, too. And when you have Phantasma, Santos Escobar, when you have Carrillo, when you have Hector Garza, when you have Andrade... You know, there has not been an American company, unless you want to count Lucha Underground, I guess, as an American company. And I, I, I don't know if you could do, really do that. I, I, there's not been anyone that's been able to tap in uh, to the, the Mexican fan base and really, you know, create stars. And they have a bounty right now. And I know they have a ridiculous amount of talent you know, up and down, uh, male, female, you know, from all over the world, they have a load of talent at their disposal. But man, if you can't do it now, 
you know, more than ever with the people that you have. I, I don't know when you'll ever be able to do it, WWE. You know, this is a big opportunity for you. And, boy, the talent's there, and they are glossy, and they look good in Phantasma. If given the opportunity with the way he speaks English, and I know that's, you know, terrible, but hey, you know, that that's the way it goes. You know, in most other wrestling companies, you can get a character over, you can use managers, there's things you can do. You, you never had to be reliant on your verbal skills, but in WWE, you know, for 30 years, that's been the most important thing is, is how you are out there. And, you know, without a manager, you know, a lot of these uh, guys who are, who are Spanish first, um, as far as their language goes, always have suffered. Well, now you have Phantasma right there. You have Santos Escobar right there. What will be the excuse then? You know, what's going to be the excuse if, if he, it, because he can't speak the language, he's not project. What is it? What's going to be the excuse? Hopefully there's none. Hopefully there's none. And these guys continue to get over. I know. 